Alright, time for the next installment of the Beginner's Guide series. Today, I will be playing some Ka. I did the uh, lethality version of Ka earlier, but today we are doing the Bruiser one. They have some different playstyles, some different options. Uh, to where it's basically like a whole different thing. So yeah, we're just going to do that now today. And uh, yeah, I mean... There is a playlist in the description you can check out if you want to see well, the previous one for the lethality version or just any other champion, really. They'll be all in that playlist. If they aren't there yet, the champion that you are looking for, they most likely will be in the future. So uh, all you got to do is subscribe. I upload daily. So uh, yeah. if, Mauk, if, if I can let this guy tank a hit, it doesn't seem to be the case. Oh, nice. He can tank one hit because his shield's essentially free, so there's really nothing to worry about there. I'm gonna smite here. If the leash was like below 600, like 500-ish or something, you know, I wouldn't really smite there because I wouldn't get full value out of it. I'd rather just use it on uh, the next camp at that point. Even do it at Wolves because obviously you have the two isolation camps here, but yeah. Don't want to clear towards a mall fight. Generally speaking for Ka as well, like just clearing blue and then down is faster because the first couple of camps are pretty much isolated. And um, well, Ka struggles a bit initially until he gets like all of his abilities to clear the other like raptors and stuff with your ew up it will be very simple to kill your raptors very quickly and yeah makes things a bit smoother i suppose but this is just slightly faster red start can definitely be done 100 no problem it is just slightly better slightly faster to do this start that's why we're doing it group him up with a w Slowly kite this back. Make sure to use my pet here as well. To uh, do a bunch of AoE damage. We're just going to go for a nice full clear. Ka doesn't have much early game capabilities. He's not very much of an early game champion. So definitely looking for some more scaling. Getting a full clear and getting some levels up is the way to go. Okay. I'm not going to smite this one. We're going to hold smite. I mean, I can hold smite for scuttle if I want to. But I'm pretty sure that's going to clear up anyway. I'm gonna get this one smited. Get it down. Now, Ka's abilities. Um, Q is just some damage. It does more damage on isolated targets. And you're maxing it first. Your W is like a skill shot if it hits like close. If you're standing close to the skill shot, it'll heal as well. So that's quite nice. With the empowered version and the evolved version, it's gonna go give a colossal slow as well as going into multiple different directions, which is pretty much Ka's best evolve. Q Evolve gives more range and then lower cooldown. E is just a leap, extra distance. That's just probably going to end badly for me. I need to uh, play a bit slow here. No reason to use my leap yet. That's fine. Oh, very good play from the, uh, from the Yasuo there, honestly. She kind of just walked up and died. Like, she was kind of fine. I was kind of chilling. She just kind of let him get in range. Yeah, sure. That's okay. Uh, let's get the pickaxe, because we're going for this. Why aren't you teleporting back to your lane? You're missing an entire wave, my guy. You are drunk. <laughs> okay, well. I mean, initially here, the Yasuo made a very nice play with the flash knock-up instantly. Um, but I don't know why she didn't just teleport back to the lane. Like, she had, like... I don't know. It is what it is, I guess. Let's go top lane straight away. We see the uh, set, uh, the set very low on HP. We see him like pressuring here. We know Zed's gone bot lane, so we could just sprint up here real quick. Like that's unfortunate. Let's just walk up to this guy. I can avoid using my leap as much as possible until it kills. I knew his W there. Was still on cooldown because it's like a 25 second cooldown level one or something crazy like that. It's actually ridiculous. Oh, this is bad. I hope I can make this. I thought he had teleport, but he already used it. So I need to push this out quick and hopefully it hits turret in time. Oh, please. Otherwise, it freezes very badly for Malphite and that would be unfixable for him. Because I was already going to push towards the set. So I have to push it there. I think it's in turret, right? Yeah, it's in turret. Okay, we're good. It was my only option. I thought he had teleport, but he already died to set once, so he didn't have teleport, which was quite bad. Could have pushed it instantly. Could have saved me valuable seconds. 
I mean, I think it's still it's still okay. It still made it. So we need to go ward something, buddy. Okay. R right now we're chilling. I mean, just calm early game. It's fine. Hit my level six here very soon, which is huge. All right, so the first evolve, we can talk about evolves a bit here. The first evolve is going to be the ult evolve, especially playing Bruiser Ka. Because it just gives that much, uh, like, outplay potential mobility. It is the best first evolve in general for Ka, also for the lethality version. Q is nice. It gives, like, mostly clear speed on, like, jungle camps and stuff. Objective damage. It is not the greatest compared to, like, some, to, to, compared to, like, ult. W evolve first is a little bit too fast on that evolve as the uh, evolve like works really well but only really later on. Let's just do this. I think it should be fine. Play slow. Don't get hit by the true damage hit there like this guy. Perfect. That's exactly what I was waiting for because I, I knew it couldn't be long. I was... This is why you'd go ult evolve, because you basically just stall him out completely. This also works really well with, like, stalling out for Gore Drinker cooldown and stuff like that. Just gonna give him a nice E here, or finish it off with W or something. Push out the wave here. Uh, this is why ult evolve is good. You see it exactly there. I could just stall out the set for ages. It resets my passive. I can d dance around him a little bit. Let's go over this way. My Malphite is dead, because he got greedy for turret platings. That's okay. I will not be able... I'm not going to help him here. He is just dead. If he survives this, that's great. But I highly doubt it. Ooh, flash. Okay, fair enough. He survived it. Not bad, not bad. Finish this off. Time to go recall right here. There's nothing else for me to really get here. I am, like, just looking to go bolt maybe dragon. Do this. Perfect. Gore Drinker is by far, like, it's pretty much the only option these days for Bruiser Ka, honestly. The reason that is the case is because they removed, like, the Omni Vamp from the uh, Eclipse, and the Omni Vamp is still there on the Gore Drinker, plus it gives the additional item healing, which is great. But Omni Vamp is an amazing stat on Ka because of isolation damage cues, healing you for a lot because of Omni Vamp. So we see an instant play potential on bot lane. We're gonna walk in with a Sweeping Trinket here. We have our ultimate backup, which is great. And then we're just gonna walk it in. Perfect. I will not be able to get the Lux here. Just the one target there. I was not really ever going to get both. Now, all we do here is we just push out the wave. Leave everything for my Zaya. Okay, well, she wasn't ready for that auto attack, I think. Okay, this guy's very low on HP. I might be able to cut him off, but I don't think so. I'm going to try, though. Because there is a plant I can use here for potential extra distance. I have Flash, I have E. Did he try to recall? I think I might be too late. I think he definitely tried to recall. Would be the smart move. Yeah, fair play. Got a good dive on Syndra. It's okay. Got my clear done here. Make sure I keep up the jungle tempo in this situation. Uh, other evolves, like, yeah, I mean... A second evolve here is definitely going to be W. Because of the W gives you a colossal amount of teamfight potential. And around level 11 is when, like, most of the team fights will start going on. You see my, my use of ult as well for gank potential here. I am using my ult to just walk into the lane invisible and get, like, a good amount of distance. I try to refrain from using my leap until I absolutely have to, to close distance at the end. Because the, the longer you can save your leap, the better it is, essentially. Should be a kill on mid lane for sure. Yeah, very good. So yeah, the longer you can uh, kind of stall out, the longer distance you can close and the longer you can hold your E, the better it's going to be for kill potential. I have the luxury to hit it there because the Sen I was pathing down, but I don't necessarily give away my position right away. That's not good, eh? That's very unfortunate even. Eh, well... I was hoping for, like, the, the Senna to be able to hit that snare there. I think in this situation, I can definitely look for this dragon. Gonna hop nicely over the wall here. Try to do it a bit out of range. The mid lane is all the way pushed in at the moment, so I don't think the Yasuo is gonna instantly rotate over here. This could technically be Ward, and I could be dead here. 
But it doesn't look like it because I see the bot lane not rotating. The mid lane is probably going to just shove the wave out. I have some very good damage with isolation damage on Qs and stuff. So I should be okay here to finish this off. There it is. And since I do now have enough gold for... Wait a second. Okay, my bot lane is kind of blind. I didn't sidestep that one. That's unfortunate. I probably should have pinged more aggressively there. It was a pretty ballsy move to say, like, the, to say the least, to go over the wall there, but my bot lane rotated slightly late. Because they were, like, kind of just waddling around here doing not too much. And I really should have uh, pinged more aggressively to have them react to the play at the timing I wanted to, or at least faster. Ooh, that's a double kill for Twitch, isn't it? I think my best bet is just sprint bot, because I think this guy's gonna get dove. Like, actually, I think she, they're going to look for a dive on this guy, most likely. I would be surprised if they didn't, honestly. Oh, ooh. Okay, okay, okay. Very spicy. Gonna walk on in here. Make sure to go out of range slightly. Ah, uh, Twitch Flash, fair enough. It's a flash cooldown for my old cooldown, so it's really not too bad. That is aggressive. Play the wave, it's fine. Get a wave out of it still. My old cooldown is very low, especially because I'm also running Ultimate Hunter, so I'm not too worried about just using an ult for a play like that. If he didn't have flash, Twitch would have been dead there. I have to make sure I clear some of these camps right now. Can't be falling too far behind on that. Suppose my earlier death is quite bad. I mean, I didn't lose that much for it, I don't think. Because I got Dragon. There's no Dragon lost. I uh, didn't give a shutdown, I don't think, either. Oh, no, I did give a 150 gold shutdown. Okay. Ult's back up in 20 seconds. The, the more ults you have, the easier ganks become. And that's also why I'm running Ultimate Hunter. Because it's just really, really good for like, more ults. Go mid. See if I can reach this guy. Ooh. Should, I would have liked to see him got hit by that one, honestly. I can't, I don't think. I can maybe, like, stall out this play or something. Especially now. Okay, I, was, I just didn't have the damage to finish him. Oh, I thought I also clicked my uh, Gore Drinker, but apparently I didn't. He had enough burst damage with Ignite there to finish off the Syndra, so kind of sucks, I suppose. Uh, is this down? No, oh, yes, this is down. Okay. I think the top gank is a little optimistic here. Since I don't have ult, I wouldn't be able to kite out a set. He would just be able to fling me and like do whatever he wants to me, basically, because I wouldn't really be able to dodge his combo, and that would be quite bad, so I don't, I'm not really going to go for that here. Level 11 is going to be like my big, big spike. That's going to be a very good level to hit. Also, they are going literally full AD, so this is going to be quite good for me, honestly. I'm just going to go top lane now. I think this is fine. My ult's going to be up close enough to the point. Okay, well, that's just warded. Okay. I suppose I'll just go Herald here. There is a potential risk right now that the, the, uh, this guy just walks up. But I feel like he's rotating down. I think, or he just recalled, but he didn't walk up because he did. Like, there's a ward here that gives away that, that information for me. But I could play around that. Yeah, he's still mid lane. Okay. Finish this off. Go up top lane right here. Should be able to reach this guy pretty comfortably. Yeah, there he, he just used his W. He's completely dead. Malphite's doing a good job here as well. Wait, hello? That's not what I clicked. Game, thank you. The problem here is if I... Let him out... He should not have enough time to go back to that one anymore. Okay, let's do this. He's not walked past here, so I'm assuming he's, like, recalling, trying to... I knew that was never gonna happen, sadly, honestly. 
Like, hopefully she pays attention. She doesn't. Yeah, she doesn't. It's okay. I, there's no reason, like, no real way I could reach the guy there. Because the Zed, if I go in, like, initially there and just hard commit to him, he instantly ults back. So the only play I have is, like, start kiting him all the way down, but then my Senna wouldn't, like, be able to rotate, or I wouldn't be able to rotate there, cut her off. There's nothing I can do. Because he will have a jump out by his W being back up, as you saw. There was really no play potential for me there. The only way is, like, maybe I leap over in the correct spot, find him instantly, and then, like... Flash over after him instantly or something and finish him off that way. That, that might be a chance, but... Even then, he could probably survive that still. I'm hitting level 11 here first, if you're wondering, before I'm gonna go bot lane right now. I'm gonna go chase this out. I, I don't want this guy to die. He was getting dangerously close to a max stack, like, twitch poison thing. We can like one or two more auto attacks, he probably would have been able to get off. I need to get this dragon, but I also lost my smite use, so that kind of sucks. But I also have 3,000 gold in my inventory right now, so I definitely need to back first. Go oh, Cleaver next. The tremendous amount of ability haste is insane. Like, it, the item got so many like buffs stats, that is just a completely crazy item right now. Second Cleaver is like, second item Cleaver is like completely insane for uh... Uh, it lowers your cooldowns to the point where you can literally just spam everything. Uh, at this point, all I really have to do is build defensive. Like, for the most part, just get, like, it's steel caps. This guy's probably going to look to flank, maybe. No, he's not. Look for an angle. I would like to use this Herald on mid lane, if possible. Just get the bounce on it. Red or blue trinket, get a free reset. All I care about is just the one bounce on the turret before like, I lose my Rift Herald, and it should be achievable here. Yep, we got the bounce. That's all I care about right now. Okay. Man. Twitch the dragon as well, and that's very annoying actually. I know Twitch is gonna be mid here. My bot lane interesting like my bot lane lost the fight to the point where they just lost the dragon. I'm perhaps should have been more aware of that situation and less heart forcing on mid lane. Oh that's one kill. Probably won't be able to get the Twitch because the Zaya didn't walk up, so it's okay. One kill is one kill, we'll take it. Yeah, I probably should have been able to play a bit more for that dragon than I did. Probably a little bit too focused on mid, perhaps. I didn't think that the that, that bot lane would just solo the dragon like that, honestly. Let's go top. I just have my blue smite upgrade now, which is a huge spike. That amount of additional map tempo movement speed is insane. Obviously not the greatest map for this, but uh, you know... Go for this guy. We're just gonna use the plant over the wall here, close to distance. Try to hold on to my E as long as possible. No problem. Uh, kind of close, but uh, we are good. Oh, he still got the kill. Oh, ignite must have been OP. Okay, cool. Yeah, right. Well, I mean, we have a mall fight into a full AD comp, so there's that's gonna be good for him regardless. So we should be okay. Also, after me, like, getting some armor items next, I'm going to be very, very hard to kill as well. So it's going to be quite a problem for them. Okay, let's go mid. Make sure to hit all the bushes here as well. And now all you really do is just ult, walk out of the bush. There he goes. Perfect. And now we rotate all the way down the bot lane. I wonder what kind of vision they have. There is a very low HP twist. This guy's dead. Hello, buddy. Finish him off with Gore Drinker because I couldn't really reach for anything else due to Twitch Poison being very, very tremendous slow. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, we see the mid lane in trouble. This guy's not dead, actually. Okay, that's kind of good. There's no way Zed chases that. That's, ri that's ridiculous. This guy is greedy as all hell. Holy moly. 
All right. Didn't, I don't think he needed the ult for that. Like, I, I'm not saying that because I want to get the kill or anything. Like, I really don't care about that. I think it's just a colossal waste of an ultimate. <laughs> I, I really just think it's a colossal waste of an ult, honestly. I'm going to have to leap over the wall here. Okay, get rid of the cannon. This doesn't really do anything. I'm very hard to kill. Let's slow him as well. Perfect. Oh, we're getting, we're looking pretty good, honestly. So, like, the second I'm gonna spend this gold and get a ton of armor, I'm gonna be nearly impossible to kill. Also, against this team, I think, like, um, Frozen Heart's gonna be really good to reduce attack speed output. Good. I could go Randowins instead of Frozen Heart, technically, against Crit. I'm gonna go more of an on hit Twitch build, definitely attack speed focused. Also, the extra mana from the Frozen Heart really helps. But at this point in the build, you're pretty much just looking for, like, good tank items. You can go a little bit more offensive and go, like, uh, some damage items. But against that team, I'm definitely not going to go for a Maw, obviously. I have 3,600 gold. I'd rather not take a fight, but I might have no choice. Nope, nope. We're going to be... We're going to be... I'm going to tell my team to let me back, hopefully. And then we're just going to go build myself a nice pair of Steel Caps and a Frozen Heart. Perfect. Frozen Heart is just an extremely good defensive item against this team, right? Colossal armor, uh, the attack speed slow on like the Twitch and the Yasuo is great, also does quite nicely against Set. So it's just a huge item here. You can also go like Death's Dance. I really like Frozen Heart for the most part. When it's good, I'll take it, you know? I don't know if I can reach any of this. That's very greedy there, buddy. I get exhausted as well. That's wonderful. Finish him off, luckily. I should be able to finish him with the next W. Perfect. You can see there, even through exhaust and everything, because I'm building this tanky with this build, you don't have to worry about anything. You literally just send it. <laughs> and that's why this build plays obviously very much different than the, uh, Bru uh, than the lethality version of Ka, because lethality version, you have to be very mindful. Of when you go in, when you look for players, because you can easily die. Okay, my Q does about 506 damage. That's something to remember with 1200. So at about 17 ish hundred, I can smite. There you go. Make sure I don't miss that one. Finish him off. Perfect. Now we're just going to yoink his blue buff and everything we can. Very mindful, like, you see your Q do damage once on Dragon, you note how much damage that does, because it will come in very crucial to smiting something out. You saw it hit 1700, I said 1700, and that's when I Q smite. And I Q smite, not smite Q, because Q smite's better animation-wise to actually get the hit off. Looping from behind here, this should be a good flank. Walk with this guy right now. Finish him off. I don't know where my Zaya went, to be honest, but... Finish off the Twitch, please. There we go. Focus the set down. I don't think he has the damage to kill me. I think I'm just way too tanky. Especially after he misses his W, I'm fine. Perfect, let's Baron. That is good. We're gonna get some resets here. I actually prefer the resets over getting Q cooldown. Because for the most part, like, you're kind of chilling anyway. And having extra reset, extra range to hold through fights is huge. I have no smite, but that shouldn't be a problem since most of our team is dead. The only one that could do something about this would be Lux. And that would be really unfortunate if she takes that. And yeah, she's not here. Really? Thank you. About to say. Okay, I just have to build armor. And I can go pretty offensive with my armor item right here, honestly. Like, I just get some extra damage out of a nice Death's Dance, you know. So we're just going to do that here. Because I don't have to worry about magic resist, right? Like, I could build, like, a Maw, perhaps, or something along those lines. But in a situation, I just easily go Death's Dance. 
Not a problem. Gives myself, uh, give myself some extra damage on that one. And then, uh, I mean, just tankiness, you know. Chilling. Alright, so ideal things we are going to be looking for here. We're just going to speed up to the side. Make sure we land all these bushes here. Use the sweeping trinket. Walk up. Use my ult. Finish him off. Get the, get the reset. Walk around. Walk around this way as well. Keep away. As you can see, I am practically unkillable. I then bait. I bait. I kill the Lux. I bait the attention of two people. Set goes in. Set gets nothing. Um, and just walk away. Like, we just use all the mobility we have to our advantage. And this is also why I take the E equal or the E evolve instead of taking Q. Because I get extra range, extra resets to make myself, uh, like, allow allow myself to get more aggressive teamfight plays in, you know? Shift the side lane here, get 600 gold for this turret. While my team is just pushing mid, I can do this. Uh, cooldowns are getting pretty low on the enemy team, so we're only going to have time for the turret, but the turret will be fine. Please don't be stupidly greedy, team. They're going to be stupidly greedy. Okay, we leap, in, we leap forward here. We can finish off the Twitch. Make sure we ult, stall out. Reset with that. And it looks like the enemy team FF'd it. Yeah, there we go. Last item here. I mean, honestly, I could just go like Thorn Mill. I could do Shereldias if I want to. There are plenty of options. I probably would like... Usually that slot would be like a Maw in a general game. Like, actually. But I'd probably build like a Thorn Mill or a Random ones in this situation here. Specifically just to be more tanky. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Uh, I'll see you guys in the end game stats. All right, so for the end game stats here, I ended up doing 32.2k damage, which is more than double the rest of the game, actually. Ah, not the game completely, but my team for sure. Very, very good damage output. You see, you can play extremely aggressive with this car build because there is just nothing they can do to really kill you, especially if you get a bit of a lead. Tremendous amount of sustain. Just be sure to use your Gore Drinker active as much as possible as well when, like, Kiting around, dancing around with your ultimate, stalling out for Gore Drinker, active cooldown, all that type of stuff. Damage to objective at 36.4k. Try to keep on top of this. If you are the winning jungler, this should always be the highest stat. Uh, if this is not the highest stat and you are doing very poorly but still are winning the game, then you are playing your role wrong. So you need to make sure you look for more dragon opportunities, more rift world opportunities, more baron opportunities, whatever it is. There is something to look at if this is a very low stat and not like 30, 40k, like very much the highest stat in the game. Because that's why it should be. If you are the winning jungler, of course. If you're losing the game like this, Zed, then it's expected, honestly, that he doesn't have that much objective damage. Because I'd have more objective control. But, yeah. Still definitely something to look out for. That's mistakes you can fix. Uh, healing done at 23.5k healing. That is a lot of healing. This build's very sustain heavy. Because Gore Drinker also still has the Omni Vamp aspect, which synergizes really well with Ka's Q damage. Since the isolation cues give a ton of Omni Vamp regeneration. And that's why Gore Drinker is still so good. 4k instead of like going Eclipse. Because previously you would be able to go Eclipse into a team comp like I just faced. Because they were very squishy generally. They were not that tanky of a team comp. So I can go Eclipse into that. That have bigger and easier one shots. Because it still had like a shield as well as uh, some Omni Vamp. But because they removed the Omni Vamp. The Gore Drinker is just honestly straight up better. Because the Omni Vamp is a tremendously good stat on Ka. And lifesteal is less effective because it doesn't really apply to your Q, right? And, I mean, where are you going to get lifesteal from in that build anyway? Because the Eclipse surely doesn't give it. So, yeah, you know. Also, you have the active item from Gore Drinker giving you HP. Damage taken here at 33.4k, as you see. Like, I am doing the most. I am taking the most. You can play very aggressively forward on this champion. Use your ultimate with blue smite to just walk into a bunch of team fights. Try to hold on to your E to be able to finish things out. Uh, but yeah, good damage taken there. Self-mitigated damage, another 34.5k as well. I took by far the most damage in total. So, yeah. Not bad. Gold earned at 17.1k. And then for the runes, Conquer healed me for about 1,000. But obviously the adaptive damage comes in here and that you don't see. A lot more valuable. Uh, 
gives a tremendous amount of extra damage dealt in fights as well. Triumph for about 1400 HP and like gold for 540. Last stance, 700 damage. This is just nice to have. You could go coup de gras as well uh, to execute people a bit easier. But if you're looking to sustain, go through a fight, like be very durable, then obviously you're going to get lower HP in certain situations. And then last stance going to be better damage in those closer fights. So I'd rather have like more damage in closer fights to be able to win those instead of having like a bit more damage to finish people off when I'm full HP because most likely you're going to be able to chase them anyway, especially after level 16 with like your jump resets and stuff like that. And we take Ultimate Hunter here for probably the reason you saw this game. I really just constantly ulted. Like we're just running people down with ult, getting ganks with ult, ult being like a 40 second cooldown, 30 second cooldown, whatever the hell it is. You're just getting that as low as you possibly can with this build setup. That, that way you can use it as frequently as possible and be as annoying as possible throughout the game while also getting the easy amounts of time to gank. And since you're not playing a build that really needs a bunch of tempo in the initial stages of the game, like the uh, or like get the cooldown on the items even for what the other like what you can use the other one for as well. Like, you don't need the gold income from Treasure Hunter. Uh, you don't really have a use for, like, free boots and the Cosmic Insight is what people run a lot with this build on Ka as well, which is just not worth it anymore because the Cosmic Insight doesn't really directly correlate with your Smite quest anymore these days, so it's less valuable. Now, obviously, it does give some cooldown on this, but the Ultimate Hunter cooldown is just better, and this gives 18 extra AD out of the tree as well. But yeah, ult utility is huge, so that is uh, that is really that. Uh, that has been it for the Bruiser version of Ka. The, the Bruiser version of Ka, sorry. And uh, yeah, if you guys have enjoyed this video, hit the like button below. And I'll see you guys tomorrow with another video. Bye.